Welcome to Oliver Travel Trailers. I'm Jason Estry, service manager, and today we're gonna to take a look at the all new 2023 Elite. Here at the front of the camper, we have what we call our LP housing. Uh, you'll have two 20 pound tanks located underneath. The Elite does only come with 20s. Uh, the 30 pound tanks will not fit. Uh, those are optional for the Elite too. Now for this, you do have a port in the front that you can spin and open. Uh, this gives you access to be able to reach inside to turn those tanks on and off. Uh, if you need to get uh, truly inside, we actually have latches, one on each side, that you would simply pull open, uh, grab a hold of it, and pull the lid off. Now we'll go ahead and set this aside. Inside the LP housing, See the two 20 pound tanks, LP regulator. Uh, now you do have a hold down system here with a bar that keeps them secure. Uh, with the LP regulator, you have a little switch. You can turn and select whichever tank you would like. Uh, what that tells the regulator is to pull from this tank. Uh, now it does have an automatic switch over. It will change and start to pull from the other tank even if this lever is selected this tank once it runs dry. If this one is open, it will go ahead and start to pull propane from this tank. Now what you would see at that point is this uh, indicator here would show red uh, because this would still be pointing towards this tank uh, since it was empty. It would change to red letting you know it had changed over and started to pull from this tank. Now you can turn it to the center, it'll pull from both tanks uh, equally. However, we typically recommend to select one or the other. That way you know once one tank is empty and you know that you need to go ahead and refill it. Now let's go ahead and place the lid back, back on. Once you have it positioned in place, let's go ahead and push the latches back on to secure it. All right. Now here in front of the LP housing, we have the front jack. Front jack does have a bubble leveler on it, uh, and you may have to adjust that on occasion with three screws on top. It will be pre-adjusted and set ready to go at delivery day. Now, if you ever lose power, you can turn the top piece, pull it off, and you'll have a manual crank attachment located inside uh, where you can use the manual crank uh, and raise and lower this front jack if you were to lose power. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a uh, look at the switches on the front of the jack. We do have a light on the front of the jack uh, that you can operate as well as the actual jack itself. Now when you press up, the camper goes up, the jack will go down. And vice versa, when you press the switch down, the camper goes down, but the jack goes up. Now, if you'll look at the bubble on top, I do want to point something out. Um, the liquid inside is sealed. However, in extreme hot temperatures, we have seen to where this bubble will disappear. Uh, it'll make you think that you've lost all the liquid. In fact, if you pull this off, sometimes water gets trapped in there and you'll see uh, water come out and it'll make you think that this has leaked. Uh, that's not the case. It's simply gotten too hot. You can let it cool down. You may even have to snap it, kind of bump it a little bit, and the bubble will usually come right back. We utilize a Bulldog two inch coupler on all of our campers as standard. You can upgrade to a two and five sixteenths. Comes standard with the pin. Uh, to open it, you'd simply pull up, it snaps open to close it. Uh, you can grab a hold, squeeze it in. However, be very careful. You may pinch uh, your fingers when doing it this method. Uh, the other method is you can go ahead and pull it this way and simply kick it into place. And that makes sure you don't pinch your fingers. Uh, once you do that, you just slide the safety pin back in place. Now I do recommend uh, when hooking up to slide the seven pin through here as well. That way the safety pin helps secure and hold it. Uh, we do have a plastic uh, piece here that secures it. Um, but you know, two, three, four, five years down the road at some point uh, that will become brittle and break. Now, if you've got two safety chains, uh, standard safety chains, uh, they are rated each for the gross vehicle weight rating of the camper. Uh, we do recommend that you crisscross these when connecting to the tow vehicle. 
You'll also have a safety breakaway. Now the safety breakaway needs to be connected directly to the tow vehicle. Never attach it to the safety chains themselves. This is the last uh, bit of safety to where if it's a uh, coupler came loose from the tow vehicle, you'll have your chains that try to stop it. If something happens with the chains, uh, then the safety breakaway should engage and apply the brakes so the trailer doesn't uh, go running off down the road by itself. Here on the street side of the camper, uh, I want to point out a few things. Over in this area is where the furnace is located. You will notice the furnace vent uh, when running. This is very hot, so don't touch it. Um, here to the left of the furnace is your tire loading information for the camper. Uh, you'll have a VIN sticker here that actually tells you the VIN number uh, when the camper was produced. You'll also have information for the tires. Uh, the tire pressure as well as the um, weight rating for the, the cargo. If you look underneath where the furnace is located, you'll notice a water inlet connection. That water inlet connection is for the black tank flush port. Now you will typically only utilize that if you get the standard toilet. Uh, if you have upgraded to the compost, uh, there may never be a need to, to utilize this. Uh, but with the standard toilet, on occasions you'll want to hook a water hose up and run fresh water to clean out that tank and flush it. Here is our power inlet. Uh, you will turn it to open it up to 30 amp power. Now th this 30 amp power is for an RV. Uh, it is not the same as 30 amp power like your dryer at home. So if you do choose to have 30 amp power installed at your house, make sure it is for a camper. Let me go ahead and grab that power cord and we'll show you how to connect it. With the power cord, you'll notice uh, specific shapes. You'll want to make sure you line it up accordingly with the power inlet. The other is the collar here. It does have threads and does need to be secured. Once you line it up, you'll give it a little bit of a twist to the right, and then you do want to go ahead and line this up to secure the collar. That will kind of help uh, keep it attached to the side of the camper while in use. And when you're done, you just simply spin the collar the other direction, turn to the left, and pull the power cord off. Uh, standard on our Elite model is a uh, never lube axle. It means you don't have to lubricate the bearings or pack them. Uh, it comes with 12 inch uh, braking. Uh, it also comes standard with the Dexter HD kit, which are the wet bolts. Those wet bolts do have to be greased every three months, 3,000 miles. Uh, the never lube axle is actually covered under the Dexter warranty for five year, 100,000 miles. Uh, you can check, the, check that out at their website. Here to the rear of the tire, you do have the external solar port. Uh, it is optional, uh, but it does come with the solar package. Uh, you'd simply plug in your external port um, and it would charge the battery. The external uh, solar system would need to have its own charge, uh, solar charge controller as this does not run through the internal charge controller. Here to the rear of the unit is where we have our uh, battery box. You'll open the door. Behind the door here to the left is our battery tray. The battery tray has two brackets that have to be slid up and then the tray slides out to expose the batteries. Now this particular um, unit here has the upgraded Lithionics lithium batteries. Uh, they come standard with 12 volt. You can get AGMs uh, or the lithium package as well. Mm -hmm. To the right of the battery tray area, we have your outside shower. You open it up, it has a hose, and then you have hot and cold controls. All right. On the outside shower, we have hot and cold water controls. Um, then you just simply press the lever to use the water. Uh, this will not have the same pressure that the inside faucets do have. Uh, when you're done with it, you will want to turn this back uh, to the off position and stow it. And it is important that you actually turn these back to the off positions as well. If you were to leave one of these on, it can cause the water to circulate from the hot through the cold or vice versa. Uh, and then you may not get the right temperature water inside the unit. Now to the right, we'll also notice here the jack switches. You've got your street side and your curbside jacks. Those are the rear jacks of the unit uh, and they operate the same way up and down uh, based on the movement of the camper. 
Now below that, you'll notice your black and gray tank valves. Uh, this is the waste system for draining. Now when you're ready to drain, make sure your waste hose is hooked up. Uh, we typically recommend that you pull the black tank first, uh, let it uh, drain, and then pull the gray to help wash out the waste pipe just a little bit with the gray water. Now, with this model, it has the compost toilet, so the black tank would not typically be used uh, and would only have the, the gray, but we do have it set up in case you ever wanted to go back to a standard toilet. Now, here on this outside door, you will notice it's the same compression latch as inside, except this one is lockable, uh, and you will receive a key for that lock. If you look to the right of this area, you'll notice two ports. We have a satellite port. This runs to the rear attic inside that can be hooked to a satellite receiver. Uh, and then from this point out to uh, an actual satellite dish. Uh, you also have cable. If you go somewhere that has cable, uh, you can hook to here. Uh, go to the TV inside and run a cable TV channel search. Now if we look down below, we have our water inlets. Uh, on the left here, we will have our city water uh, connection. What that is for is if you have a water connection, uh, you hook it, turn it on, it pressurizes itself and uh, runs through to the faucets. We do recommend to utilize a water pressure regulator uh, that we do provide you at delivery. To the right, we have our fresh water tank fill. Uh, you would also hook a water hose, turn your outside water on, and that's just gonna fill your onboard fresh tank. You will need to monitor it uh, once it reaches full. Uh, you'd want to make sure to turn that off. Uh, you'll notice a clear tube sticking out the bottom here. This is tied into the AC drain system. We do have a drain kit attached to it, uh, so as it pulls moisture out of the inside of the camper, uh, we try to drain as much of that off down these tubes as possible. Uh, depending on the humidity level, it still may end up dumping some off on the rooftop of the camper uh, if it's more water than what the drain system can handle. Now, while we're still down here, we'll look at the jack points here. You'll have some jack point uh, stickers below here. This means that if you ever need to jack the camper up, you simply place something here, and this is where you would want to jack it from. Here at the rear of the unit, uh, if we look up top, you'll see uh, the true air conditioner. Behind that is the optional rear camera, and off to the right side is the optional HDMI antenna. Uh, of course, you'll notice four round circular lights. Those are your marker lights. Uh, and then the Oliver lens. The Oliver lens does light up with the markers. It is not a brake light. Uh, if you go ahead and look down towards the rear, uh, of course you'll notice your LED lights here in the, the rear for your uh, stop, turn signals, uh, brake lights, and reverse lights. Now over here on the right, underneath your uh, lights, you'll notice another water inlet. That is that rear inlet that works for the boondock and winterization configuration. Um, you would simply hook a short, uh, roughly two foot long hose uh, into that and then put the other end of that hose into either your antifreeze, fresh water, um, whatever liquid it is that you are trying to pull inside the camper. Uh, once you've got it attached, of course, you'd need to go inside, uh, turn the water pump on once the valves are set to the proper configuration. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the bumper. Uh, the bumper and the storage behind the bumper is set up for the waste hose. So once you attach your waste hose, uh, you can leave it attached and store it behind the bumper. Uh, no need to put it back inside the camper with the other items. There's a push pin on both sides. You may, in, you may have to press up to relieve some of the pressure on the pin. Slide the pin out on both sides. That'll drop the bumper down and you'll be able to see the inside storage area. Now here at the rear, you'll also notice an LP Quick Connect. That is an optional thing. You get, uh, with the LP Quick Connect package, you'll get a front and rear Quick Connect. Uh, this is a low pressure system, so whatever you connect to it will need to be designed for an RV low pressure system. Here at the rear of the unit, we have the spare tire cover. Hopefully you'll never have to use the spare tire, but in case you do, you just flip down the license plate cover all right very important to note there is a washer in here you'll want to go ahead and remove that before you pull the cover off we'll set that off to the side all right. 
once you slide the spare tire cover off, there is a little quick disconnect area in here for the LED license plate light that you'd want to pull loose. All right. Then you can set it off out of the way. All right. Now we have access to our spare tire. Uh, again, you'll have another piece here that you have to spin off in order to gain access to it. We should be able to slide our spare tire off. Now, you may want to go ahead and check the pressure in the spare tire. Uh, spare tire should typically be at a higher rate uh, since it's not utilized until you need it. Uh, keeping it at the max uh, 80 PSI uh, is recommended. Uh, once you pull it off and you need to adjust it, you may want to lower that PSI down. Um, but if you don't, uh, it would definitely be better to have it at the 80 PSI until you can get somewhere to get the tire taken care of uh, versus to be at a lower or, uh, than recommended PSI. Now, uh, once you get ready to put to either uh, the tire you're replacing or you just want to put this back in place, lift it up onto the bumper area. Make sure you slide the LED light back through the center. Now, you'll notice I, I slid it through one of the spokes here as the true center of the wheel will sit up on the uh, holder for the spare tire cover. Then we'll reattach the wiring for the license plate light. Be sure to put the washer back in place. And just snug it up till it's good and tight. And good to go. Looking at the curb side of the unit here, uh, point out the hot water heater. This one does have the Truma, which is an optional upgrade with the Truma package. If we open the door, go ahead and drop it down. Uh, here is the outside power. This is the power button that needs to be on before the CP control on the inside uh, will recognize it. If this is turned off, you will get a W255W uh, warning that it does not see the water heater. Uh, now this is the lever that would be utilized for draining when it com uh, comes time to drain. However, you'll want to make sure that you've bled all the pressure off inside through the faucets before you ever open this up. Now, uh, for storage, of course, you just turn it to the off position when not in use. Uh, and as far as power on on the top and the bottom, either one can be used. Uh, the inside control will actually uh, override and set uh, eco or comfort mode. Now, if for some reason your inside controls are not working, it's supposed to default back to where this top power on is eco and the bottom power on is comfort mode. Now here to the side of the Truma, uh, we have your outside uh, 120 amp. This outlet uh, is tied to the GFCI inside. 
Here to the left of the door, we have a top vent. Um, this top vent is not necessary as far as venting for the refrigerator. Uh, you will actually have a blank in here that covers that up, but uh, you have the ability to, to pull that out uh, if you, for some reason, wanted to vent it. However, it's, again, not necessary with the new uh, ACDC refrigerator. Uh, because of the new ACDC fridge and uh, no need to vent uh, like the LP, uh, we do have the new table option here, uh, or standard, it's a standard feature. Um, you just simply pull it up into place uh, to provide a little table setting as you're outside. Uh, now below that you can see we do have an access panel that is for service more than anything. Uh, once you're ready to go with it, you will need to reach underneath and release the brackets. Slide it back into the closed position. Now let's take a look underneath this table. Underneath this area, you'll notice uh, this uh, hole here. This is an overflow for the fresh tank. Uh, so if you're filling the tank and it does become overfilled, uh, it'll overflow at this location. We're gonna take a look at uh, the curbside awning. Now the Elite model comes standard with an electric awning. Uh, on this particular model, we can only put one on the curbside. Uh, it comes with a remote. Uh, now for this to work, you do have to have the switch turned on on the inside at the main entry switch plate. Uh, once it is on, uh, you can Press the out button and go ahead and extend the awning to the out position. It will come out and stop at a preset uh, setting. It also has a LED light bar on the front that you can turn on as well. Now, if you don't want to extend it fully to the full distance, you can press the stop button. Uh, it'll stop immediately where it's out. Uh, at that point, you could go ahead and tell it to go on and continue out. Uh, or we could stop it and send it back in. But I'm gonna go ahead and let it run all the way out to its preset uh, setting. All right, that is the full extension on the awning. Now, one thing with all awnings, uh, typically they are primarily sun shades. Uh, you can have them out in light sprinkles, uh, but you want to ensure that water does not accumulate on top of the fabric. If too much water does accumulate and it's not running off fast enough, it can stretch the fabric, uh, cause an issue. Uh, as the awning goes back in, it's retracted and, and gets uh, wound up on itself. Uh, one other thing that you'll want to make sure uh, to do with the awning is out. Uh, any leaves or tree debris or anything like that that falls on top of the fabric, you'll want to clean off before retracting. Uh, otherwise, it can go inside the case and damage the awning. Now, uh, when you're ready for it to go in, you just simply press the end button and it'll go back and secure itself inside its case. Here at the entry door, this particular model has the RV keyless entry lock uh, where you can press the buttons to lock and unlock the unit. It only controls the deadbolt. Uh, the key will function for the handle. Uh, now this key only locks the handle where you can't pull it. Uh, this controls the deadbolt where the whole entire door uh, remains closed. Uh, we do recommend to uh, secure the deadbolt uh, during transit. Here on our entry door, we do have a hold open link here. You have your um, hoop uh, and your hook. You would simply open the door to the proper position, uh, remove the hook, and drop it into the hoop. So let's go ahead, uh, take a look at the inside. Before we do, we're gonna fold down the entry steps uh, to show you how those operate. These are custom stairs built here at Oliver and it is a dual system. You slide it out, fold the stair down into place. Let's take a look at the inside. Take a look at the uh, switch plate located inside the entry door. Now, we have a master switch currently in the off position. If we turn it on, uh, first lights that will automatically t uh, come on are the touch lights on the perimeter of the camper. Uh, we can go ahead and turn on all the other lights in the camper. Uh, showing the blue LED shows they are on. Of course, if you turn the master off, uh, it goes ahead and turns all of those off as well. 
when you turn the master back on, anything that you left in the own position will automatically come back on. You also have an awning rear camera, uh, cell Wi-Fi amplifier switches. Now once you turn these on, uh, each is for a dedicated uh, appliance. Uh, awning is standard, the camera, uh, cell Wi-Fi are options and you may actually have blanks there if you don't uh, choose those options. But if we turn the master switch off, you'll notice that those three still continue to be powered up. Uh, the awning, uh, you don't necessarily want to leave it powered on while you're traveling, uh, but you might actually want to leave the rear camera on. Uh, that way you can utilize it as you're driving. Cell Wi-Fi amplifier, depending on the option you have, you may want to leave it on as well. Uh, if you get the cradle point option, you can actually utilize that in the tow vehicle while driving. Let's go ahead and turn the lights back on, step inside the camper a little further and take a closer look. Here to the inside of the entry door, we also have the closet uh, fire extinguisher located here on the outside of the door. Uh, you've got a compression latch that you pull, twist to open. Uh, once you have the closet open, you can see two shelves and a hanging rod. Uh, you'll also notice a vent plumbing pipe that goes through the roof to vent the plumbing. Uh, and then in the Elite One, you'll also notice this is where we store uh, all of the items you'll receive at delivery, a water hose, a uh, waste hose, and a power cord. Before we step into the bathroom, we want to go ahead and take a look at the switch for the lights. Uh, it's located in the cabinet area above the dinette. It is not labeled, uh, but this switch is for the bathroom lights. We'll go ahead and turn that on. That way we can step inside and see the bathroom. Here inside the bathroom is pretty much uh, the same as with the Elite 2. Uh, one big difference is there's not uh, any room for a cabinet inside the bathroom in the E1. Uh, we still in this particular model have the Nature's Head compost toilet, which is an option. Um, you have your standard uh, countertop sink faucet that uh, doubles into the shower uh, with a vanity insert uh, with the towels uh, or wash, wash rags that you can hang. Uh, it also has a water pump switch located up underneath the vanity, just like in the Elite 2. So that way, if you're in the bathroom, you can turn that water pump on. Uh, the shower curtain is an option inside the E1 bathroom as well. Uh, and this also has the same Max Air bath fan as in the Elite 2 uh, and operates in the same manner. Now, I do want to step in here, take a closer look at the backflow preventer. In this model, we have the standard handle uh, cable instead of the auto drain, so that way you can see how it operates. So here we have the standard uh, backflow preventer. Uh, it's located just uh, at, near the base uh, of the toilet area. Uh, to open the valve, you would simply pull it out. To close it, you will press it in. Now, you'll want to make sure it is closed when you're traveling, driving down the road. And anytime you are using the plumbing system uh, stationary at a campground, you will want to come in here, open this up before you get started. All right, this is a convection microwave. It is an upgrade option. Uh, all of our units do come with a standard microwave. Uh, however, if you want the convection, you can add it. It works just like any standard microwave that you would have at home, uh, push button. Uh, one of the things I would mention with this is if you ever try to preheat or do any heating, um, it might flash food. Uh, that simply means it's a safety feature. You need to open the door close the door. It's uh, trying to remind you it needs to have something inside the microwave. Also want to warn, do not ever use the microwave uh, when something is not inside it. If you run it for a long period of time, it can damage the microwave or cause a fire. Now, if we look below the microwave, you'll see the new ACDC uh, refrigerator in the 2023 models. It's the same one as in the Elite 2 operates in the same fashion. You open the door, the controls are on the inside. It's a rotary dial. You'll just uh, turn it from zero up to seven uh, based on the temperature setting that you'd like to have. Above the microwave uh, cabinet above, uh, you'll notice a service port here. That service port is for uh, maintenance of the entry switch plate. 
Uh, and then you also notice a single 120 volt plug that is the power for your microwave. Here in the uh, kitchen area, uh, you'll have a cutting board, uh, your standard kitchen sink, uh, kitchen faucet that does pull down, turn into a sprayer. You'll also notice a two burner stove. Uh, this uh, is a little different than in the Elite 2. Uh, works the same way though. You would press it, turn it to the light, and hit the ignition button in order to start it. Uh, make sure once running it, uh, you let it cool down a little bit before closing the lid. Here in the kitchen galley, uh, we have three drawers in the Elite, uh, one small one in the top. They all have soft closed drawers that pull back most of the way. You will have to go ahead and press them the last little bit for the additional 10 pound push pull latch that helps secure it a little bit better during transit. Uh, we'll tell you though that even during transit, if you have any anything in there of significant weight that can shift and move, uh, it may slide and act just as you would opening the drawer. If it comes in contact with the front and pops it loose, the drawers could come open. Uh, would tell you to make sure that you pack plenty of stuff around everything in there so that it doesn't shift. Uh, the center drawer is the largest drawer, can accommodate the most items. However, st still keep in mind, uh, you don't want to overload this drawer with too much weight. Um, as the more weight you have, the more likely it could come open during transit. Soft close back, and then again, you'll press it all the way in to get that last little bit uh, on the last pull push uh, latch. Let's take a look at the dinette area. Here at the side dinette, uh, we have a dinette that doubles as a small bed as well. Uh, we can remove this table, drop it down, slide the cushions to create a bed area. Uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look up above. You do have two cabinets and your radio. Uh, it's the same radio as in our Elite 2. Uh, operates the same way. Uh, you turn the power on, it lights up. You can turn the speakers off. It is zones 1 and zone 2. Uh, if for some reason you ever turn it on and you get nothing out of it, just double check to make sure these zones one and two are turned on. And you will see that here as they're not lit up currently. Once we turn it back on, they'll come back on. We'll go ahead and turn that volume back down. Now, uh, radio works similar to any other radio. You do have additional connections, auxiliary points, uh, port, HDMI, USB. Uh, you have a Bluetooth, so you can Bluetooth from your phone or your device. Uh, auxiliary button. Now the auxiliary button, you will want to scroll through. You've got several different connections, some that are used, some that are not used. Uh, one important one is ARC, uh, A-R-C, uh, and that's going to get you sound from the TV to the radio through the speakers. Uh, you would utilize that if you were playing something through the TV. Uh, through the uh, optional HDMI uh, antenna, and that way, instead of the sound coming through the TV speakers, you could get it uh, more like a surround sound through the radio. We'll go ahead and turn this back off. You will notice that it uh, remains red when it is turned off. Now, if you look underneath, you'll notice another touch light. You can turn it on and off um, as needed. Uh, you'll also notice here we have some reading lights. You just simply press the lens to turn that on and off. There are a couple throughout the camper. They all work the same way. Uh, our window shades are the same. Uh, they may just be slightly different sizes, but you have your night shade that pulls down, your day shade that pulls up. You can pop these off the window and rotate them if you prefer. Uh, now all of our side windows do slide open as well as the screens. So you can open the screens and the windows Located on the side of the front dinette seat, you'll notice a GFCI. Now, all of the outlets uh, that run through the outlet circuit will run through this GFCI. So if any of them uh, are not working, this is the first place that you'd want to go and take a look at. Hit the reset button and sets it back on. Now, if you ever come in here and the buttons don't seem to work, it may be because the GFCI itself is not getting 120 volt power. You need to double check to make sure that you are getting 120 volt power into the camper. Now, let's go ahead and take a look across uh, 
the way uh, under this uh, side of the dinette seat, you'll notice your breaker panel. This is your 120 volt uh, power in the camper. Um, if anything's not working, you can also come here just to see if a breaker has been tripped. Uh, to the left side of that is your 12 volt fuse panel. And on the inside of the panel, you will see that it is labeled for your convenience. And if we swing back to the other side underneath the table, you'll notice uh, two 12 volt ports. You'll have a 12 volt cigarette style port and a 12 volt USB port. And next to that, you have the return air vent for your furnace. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dinette table and drop it down into a bed mode. There are some thumb screws up underneath that secure the table to the wall. We will need to loosen those in order to pull the table off. Once you have the table lifted up and off of the brackets and the poles, you'll want to reach down to the base, unscrew the base from the floor. Once it's loose, you should be able to rotate the pole. Once you have the base loosened, uh, you can just rotate the pole, pull it up out of the base. Now what we'll want to do is take the table and slide it down in the channels to create the bed area. And then at this point, we could simply slide the cushions down into the bed. And of course, to turn it back into a dinette, you just do it right backwards. Secure the collar back down, and then just line the bracket underneath the dinette table up with the pole. Drop it into the brackets on the wall. And on top of the pole. So towards the rear of the unit in between two of the campers, there's another switch located here. Uh, this is your inside courtesy light. So if you turn that on, you'll have one that's located on the front side of the dinette as well as one in the bathroom. Right. In the street side cabinet uh, above the street side bed, uh, I just want to point out in here, this is an optional uh, cell booster amplifier. Uh, so if you get that option, it will be located back here. Typically, there's no reason for you to be in here unless there is an issue going on or you just want to double check it. Once you turn the, the power on at the front switch plate, you'll notice the lights light up here. Uh, an important thing here is to get the serial number of that cell booster. Now, once you have the serial number, you can report that into your carrier and it does help provide a little better service. So here at the rear of the unit, uh, next to the what we call the attic is the rear cabinet. Uh, you have your inverter remote panel. Now in the Elite, uh, you can only get the 2000 watt. Uh, the 2000 watt inverter will operate your microwave and your outlets. It will not operate your refrigerator or your air conditioner. Now currently we are connected to shore power. So the light is green here for shore power connection. We can hit a button that shows that we are at 13.9 volts in bulk charge. So that shore power is charging our batteries currently and supplying us with power inside the camper. Now to turn the inverter on and off, if you aren't on shore power, you use this round button here, you press it in, that would turn it on. Now it's in bypass mode uh, or, or standby mode uh, because we are in uh, shore power connection. If shore power was to fail, then it would automatically kick over to inverter. We do not recommend that you do that simply because if you lose shore power and it kicks over to inverter and continues to supply that power, you may not be aware of it and could uh, run through your battery voltage until the batteries are dead. Uh, it'd be much better to know that you've lost power and then make the choice to, to switch over to inverter if you choose. Uh, now, once you are on battery, uh, this light would go off and the next one would come on. Uh, the other light would be for if there's an error or something going on. Uh, there are some settings that you can scroll through, but all of this is pre-set up and ready to go uh, for you at delivery day. Now, if you look below that, you'll see the sea level uh, two tank monitor that's gonna give you battery readings uh, as well as capacity readings on your tank 
press the battery button, it shows 13.6 volts. It does not match and there can be slight differences between the two, that is okay. Uh, if you press the fresh button, it tells us we have 44% in the fresh tank. Now, if uh, it disappears and you're needing to see it for a little longer, you press it twice, a little dot will come up and then it'll remain in there. Now, you'll notice that it changed just a little bit because I did rock the camper. Uh, so the water in the tank moved just a little bit away from where the sensor is. Uh, a lot of the readings in here will depend on how level the camper is front to back, side to side, placement of that sensor. Uh, and there is about a 13% variation in it as well. <clears throat> now, if you want the gray reading, you'd simply press the gray button and the black tank as well. You do have a water pump switch. This is the primary water pump switch. Turn it on, the green light comes on. Water pump would engage and, and uh, pressurize the system, ready to deliver at the faucets. Again, you do have that secondary uh, pump switch located in the bathroom underneath the uh, vanity insert. Now, if we look down below the sea level tank monitor, you'll notice the smoke CO alarm, same style that you might have in your house. Uh, it's got a bracket attached to the under cabinet here. Uh, you'd spin it to remove the smoke alarm to bring it down. Once you bring it down, it is the same uh, style in home. You can press test silence button and you also have a battery that will need to be replaced at some point. To reattach it, you'd simply place it back into the bracket. And then lock it back into place. We'll go into the Victron Connect app. Now, once we go into the Victron Connect, it's gonna show me uh, all of the Bluetooth uh, Victron available. Uh, of course, now I'm here on site with quite a few campers that have it, so it's showing me several. Uh, now, the Smart BMV is the battery monitor. Of course, you can see the picture to the left. If you'll click on that, it'll log into it. Six zeros is the default pin code. This particular one is out of date, so we would need to update it. Uh, you'll simply click the update button, run it through until it finishes its update. Again, note the six uh, zeros. Um, I didn't have to enter it because I'm already connected to it. Now, uh, it's telling me that it's unsecured access to change the pin code. I'm not gonna change the pin code now because I'm gonna wait until whoever buys this camper can change it to what they want it to. Not now. So it's showing me 100% state of charge on the batteries. Uh, now it's popped up and it's asking me for an instant readout. Um, I do like that feature. Uh, you can see here in the center where it shows a little bit more information underneath. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and say enable now. Uh, we'll go back in a moment and take a look to see what that shows. Uh, but here on the main screen, 100% state of charge shows my voltage of 13.61 volts. Uh, the current draw that I have, uh, that can either be negative if you're drawing or it can be a positive uh, if you're charging. Uh, at 13.61 volts, we're probably in a float state of charge on the batteries. Now, the consumed amp hour shows how much we've uh, consumed during this uh, last time period. Uh, time remaining doesn't show anything because we're currently connected to a shore power. We can go into the history and see some more information as well as trends. Now, let's go ahead and go back out. Now, we're going to go ahead and log into the solar charge controller. It's the Smart Solar MPPT. Now, while we're on this screen, you can see some of the ones I've already uh, enabled the smart readout, uh, where it shows the voltage, the watts, and uh, information underneath. Now, let's go ahead and go into the solar charge controller. Again, six zeros is the default pin code. Uh, and again, this one is out of date, so we'll need to go ahead and update it. Once the update is complete, go ahead and click the continue button. It will send us back to the main screen. We'll go ahead and click back into the charge controller. All right. And since I'm already uh, connected to this one, I did not have to, to enter the six uh, zeros. I'm again not going to change the pin at this time. But now this is showing us information. Uh, you have 
solar voltage information. This, uh, this is from the panels and you've got batteries. That is from the batteries. They also show the current at both uh, the panels and the batteries as well. Uh, and again, you can go into the history. You can go into the trends to see more information. Now, as far as the settings for either one of these, they should already be set up uh, by us here uh, at the plant or at the dealership. Uh, if for some reason you have questions, you can give us a call. Let's take a look at uh, the cabinets. Now, all the cabinets uh, do have a compression style lock, uh, latch. You'd pull it out, spin it, you'd open it. Uh, now, this particular cabinet is the rear cabinet above the exit window, what we like to call the attic. Here in the attic, you do have the optional uh, HDMI switch plate here. This turns the uh, exterior antenna on and off with the little black button. When it's pressed in, green light, the antenna is on, and you can do a channel search. Uh, the 120 volt outlet here is what powers your smart TV, and you do have a 12 volt port as well. Um, we do leave the satellite connection and an additional HDMI connection. Both of these are already uh, connected. The HDMI is connected directly to the TV, and this is connected to the satellite port outside the camper, uh, so you can add other things later. Now, if we take a look at the other side of the attic, now on this side of the wall is our surge protector display. This is not the surge protector, it's just simply the display. Now in this unit, we are currently hooked to shore power, so it is scrolling through all of the information uh, about that incoming power. It's showing that we have 120 volts currently, 13 amps are being used, 60 hertz, and E0. E0 means no errors. If we were getting an error message, um, it could be E1 through E10 showing something is wrong. And at that point, it would not be supplying power into our panel uh, and we would not be receiving 120 volt power. We'd need to either contact Progressive Industries or you can contact the Oliver Service Department and we can help find out what's going on with that incoming power. You'll also notice a switch here. It's a bypass and normal. We recommend leaving it in normal use mode all the time. If you do choose to go into bypass mode, you switch it, it'll display off. That means you have chosen to allow the shore power come into your camper regardless of if there are any issues with it or not. Uh, if you choose to do so, it is possible that damage could occur. Um, so like we said, typically we recommend leaving it in normal use mode to make sure you are protected. Let's take a look at the Truma controls. This is the new CP control for the Truma package. Uh, you would get that with the uh, Truma air conditioner, Truma water heater, and this also controls the uh, new Truma Vario heat furnace. Now the Vario heat is standard in all units, so you will have this to control your furnace regardless of the package. This unit has the entire Truma package, so we're gonna press the button to wake it up. A little picture of the camper, if we go into it, it gives us access to the heater and the AC. Now you can select heater and then set the temperature that you want. If we set this temperature, you'll notice a tank comes up to show we are using propane and a little flame. Once uh, it tries to ignite and it's burning, it, this, this will start to flash, letting us know that it is heating to temperature. Now we're gonna go ahead and go back into it, uh, turn this all the way back down to the off position. You'll notice our flame and our uh, propane bottle disappeared. Now I'd like to go into it, we'll go into AC. So in AC, we can just do vent. That's just gonna turn your fan on. You can go into cool mode, you'll see a snowflake. We can go ahead and set that. And then that's gonna kick on. The fan speed will be whatever it was at the last time we used it. You can have low, uh, middle, high, and night mode. Hmm. Go back in here and turn the air conditioner back off. Now, if we wanna control our water heater, we'll go over here to that icon. It's currently off. We can go to eco mode, which maintains the water uh, temperature in the, in the tank at about 42 degrees. Comfort mode's gonna maintain it at uh, 102. Uh, now, once you turn and set this on, you can uh, set what you want the temperature to be for it to deliver out to the faucets. The standard's 120. Uh, we'd recommend leaving it at that, uh, that mode. All right. Now, uh, of course, fan, you can go into fan speed and just do a vent uh, that way as well. 
This is a timer where you can tell it that you want it to come on at say 5 a.m. in the morning and run to about 6 a.m. You can tell it you want the heater or the AC to come on, either one and set your temperature. Uh, if you turn that on that way when the time comes, it'll heat it up first thing in the morning, uh, get it warm before you get up out of bed if that's what you'd like. Uh, once you turn that setting on, let's just go ahead and do that real quick so you can see. Let's say it to be there. You can also set that you want uh, your water heater to go ahead and come on and be preheating up for the morning. Tell it to turn it on. You'll notice the icon in the top right corner here showing that it is on. If you decide you want to turn it back off, you just select it back again and press off. Now it's off, the icon has disappeared. We can go into the clock, set, uh, set the time that we, um, it is to, to your time zone. Uh, and then you can also go into the wrench. Uh, if you go into the wrench, this is the settings. The offset is set for the furnace. This is a differential. Uh, if you set it for negative two, that means that once it reaches temperatures, the temperature will have to fall at least two degrees before the furnace uh, kicks back on. Uh, ACC, you select that and you tell it you want that on. Now what that does is gives you access to AC set, which is the same thing as the furnace differential. Now we'll go in here and say that we want the air conditioner differential to be about two degrees as well. Uh, again, you can set that based on what you would like it to be. If you go into the AquaGo, you can go into the calcium. Calcium buildups at 1% right now. That way you can keep an eye on it and see when it's getting closer to time. Uh, when it is getting closer to um, percentage where you would have to decalcify, you may want to plan that as it does take a, a little bit of time. All right. You can also go in here, clean mode is when it's time to clean. Don't ever select that until you're ready. Once you go into clean mode, you're in clean mode. Uh, you can go in here and adjust the, the hardness setting based on where you're at. Right. Temperature can be changed from Celsius to Fahrenheit. The brightness of the screen, uh, you can change the time format to either 12 or 24 hour. Uh, change the language index and reset. Reset would set it back to factory settings and the index is just going to show you the software uh, in the system. Now, if you go back to the main screen, I do want to point out here too, the little plug um, icon that just means that it is receiving 120 volt power, um, which means we're on shore power in this unit. If you have the Elite 2 with the 3000 watt inverter, and it's turned on, you may also see that uh, icon as well. In the cabinet area to the right of the kitchen, we have the new Victron Energy battery monitor. It also displays uh, your voltage. Uh, it'll show you the state of charge, your amp hours, and some different information, uh, amps utilized. Um, you can scroll through this directly on the monitor. You can also choose to Bluetooth from your phone get the readouts directly on your phone as well. Uh, we'll show you that a little bit later. Uh, it is pre-set up for you and ready to go once uh, you pick up on delivery day. Now to the right of that in this cabinet, I do want to point uh, something out. If you open this cabinet up, you'll notice a red dial switch in here. This is for solar. Uh, it's just a solar disconnect, disconnect the panels from the charge controller inside. Uh, this would be utilized either for storage or for service purposes. Now, the inside part of the Truma AC, the air box, this is where the air from outside gets dumped in and then directed through the venting system. There are several different things you can adjust here. Uh, you can swivel this adjustment uh, where it will either blow air this direction or we can turn it to blow it more that direction. We can also turn this to where it forces the air more forward or tries to force it more downward. Uh, you've got the same adjustments in the rear as well. And then you've got this slider in the center. Now the slider in the center uh, adjusts a piece inside. Uh, it's kind of like an upside down V uh, where once it drops, it kind of pushes air to both places. Uh, you can adjust it uh, and allow it to push more of it towards the front of the camper. Uh, I would say to, to do that simply because the unit is placed to the rear, 
so you may uh, benefit more from more air flowing to the front. You wouldn't necessarily want to adjust it and dump so much to the back running into this back cabinet. Now, uh, this is just an IR sensor on the box uh, because the Truma does come with a remote control as well. Uh, you don't have to use CP Plus located on the, uh, the, the rear wall next to the cabinet. Um, do want to point out one other thing. The Truma system does come with a sensor, uh, temperature sensor, and in the Elite One, it is placed towards the front underneath the cabinet where the bath light switch is located. Let's go ahead and zoom in so you'll see that sensor. Let's take a look at the Max Air Fan. It's located on the ceiling uh, next to the kitchen countertop. Now you will want to utilize this while you're using the propane uh, cooktop. Uh, at other times you may want to vent air in, vent air out, uh, and it also has ceiling fan mode. Ceiling fan mode simply closes the lid and would help to circulate the air already inside the camper. Now you can control it from directly here at the fan itself. Uh, you've got a power button. It's gonna turn on and go into the last mode it was in. Uh, it's opening the lid itself, uh, but you can manually open, close it. We could close it, uh, the lid right now and put it into ceiling fan mode. Uh, you've got a plus and minus button that controls the fan speed here. And then you can also control uh, to where it's either venting air in or out directly here at the fan. Um, we'll go ahead and turn this off for now. I want to take a look at uh, the remote control for the Max Air Fan. Look at the uh, Max Air Fan remote. Uh, you can control it from the remote. Uh, if it's asleep, you'd press the button to wake it up. Once the display is up, you'll press it again. You're going to turn the fan on. It's going to automatically go back to where it was the last time it was on. Uh, but it does show you the speed is at 50, there's in. You can press this button and change the direction of the air to where it's now venting out. Uh, we can adjust the fan speed with the fan buttons, increasing the speed or decreasing the speed. The plus and the minus on the remote actually changes the set temperature over here. Uh, you could tell it that I want the set temperature at 70, press the auto button. At this point, what it's gonna do is it's gonna try to determine what it needs to do in order to get the room temperature of 68 to 70, whether that's venting air in or out. However, it cannot cool the air or heat the air. Uh, it's just gonna try to achieve uh, what you've asked for with its capabilities. Now you can also, um, let's go ahead and set this back to air in. We're gonna adjust it, turn the auto off. Yep, there we go. All right, so now we've got the auto set turned off. We've got air coming in, uh, but say I just want to do it in ceiling fan mode. I can press this button to close. Shows that it is in ceiling fan mode now, so it's neither venting air in or out, but simply recirculating the air already inside the camper. Now, once I'm done with this, I can just simply press the off button and put the remote away. Take a look at the uh, TV in the E1. It is located in the rear of the unit over in the corner. The TV does swivel a little bit back and forth. Uh, that's about the only adjustments you have in this model, uh, depending on where, where you're sitting, uh, so you can turn it to get a better viewing angle. Now, let's go ahead and kind of spin it uh, and take a look at the exit window. Now, here at the rear of the unit, uh, we do have our emergency exit window. The window shade operates the same as the others. Do we want to point out that the rear window glass part does slide open. Uh, the screen, however, does not slide. You'll notice it has a little red pull tab. That pull tab is just simply to rip the screen out of the way, and that gives you access to the emergency handles. You open both emergency handles, and you can pivot uh, open and slide down the back. Uh, of course, you can also close it back once you're done. Now, if you take a look at the uh, screen, it does have little metal clips uh, where it just snaps uh, in place. You will need to position it kind of in behind the window shade. Once you position uh, the lower clips back in place, you'll just simply press the top and it should snap back into place. We're gonna go ahead and set the rear bed up. Now I've gotten the filler panel uh, out for this. It is located inside your closet up against the wall. Um, for the Elite One, the filler panel will be placed to the rear. 
So we'll go ahead and just slide it into the tracks. Once you have that in place, we'll go ahead and take the table and we'll need to position it into place. Now we're just gonna take the table and we're gonna set it down into the tracks as well. Once you have the table in place, you just simply pull the back cushions down, put them into place for the center section. Now you will have some left over. You don't have to use all of these. You can either disconnect them and hang them up somewhere, um, or you can let them hang off the front. And then your bed's ready to go. Let's take a look under the front dinette seat. You'll notice that this is not a storage compartment. However, if you ever need to gain access under here, this is where the furnace is located as well as the backflow preventer valve and the black tank blade valve. We're gonna go ahead and take a look underneath the other dinette seat. This again is not a storage compartment, but this is your main electrical area. Here, uh, you've got your inverter located. This is a uh, optional uh, 2000 watt inverter. Uh, you'll notice uh, your bus bar, your ground bar, and the back side of your uh, fuse and breaker panels. Now, uh, this should not be an area you typically need to get into um, and typically would only be for services. I do want to point out here, there is an inline fuse. Uh, this inline fuse is for the optional ex external solar port. Taking a look in the bedding area on the street side, we're going to go ahead and remove all the cushions so we can get to the access panels below. All right. You have two uh, access panels uh, below. Uh, these, of course, are not storage compartments. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove these completely. In the front area, uh, in front of the battery box here, you'll notice one of your rear jacks. Uh, this may be necessary if you ever lose power in order to use your manual jack crank. Now to the left of it, uh, this is your actual surge protector um, that runs to the display in that rear attic. Uh, your solar charge controller here as well. Now, uh, the display screens are not here. This one has the display in the attic and this one is actually Bluetooth so you can view it on your phone. Uh, typically everything in here, uh, there's some plumbing, access to your blade valves as well as your external shower, uh, but this would be more for uh, service uh, or getting in to, to, if you needed to see something. Here under the curb side, we also have some access panels. We're gonna go ahead and remove these. Now, uh, on the one, you'll notice that it does have a configuration chart for your valves for the water pump. Uh, normal valve configuration is for city water hookup use or for use out of your fresh tank through the water pump. Uh, the boondock and winterization valves utilize the water pump to pull from the rear port only and either deliver to the faucets or to the tank based on what you're wanting to do. Now, if we look down uh, in here, you will see your uh, water pump. To the left of the water pump is your filter screen that needs to be cleaned out on occasions. Uh, definitely be careful when reattaching. It is plastic threads. Uh, you don't want to cross thread that. Here is your accumulator. Uh, it is pre-filled with air pressure here that is to help with the hammering from the water pump. Uh, however, if you ever need to check it or add air, uh, it is the port at the rear of the unit. Now, your water valves here uh, are the ones pictured uh, that control basically where the pump pulls water from and where that water is delivered to. Now, if you look to the left, you'll see your hot water heater. This one has the optional Truma water heater. Uh, however, uh, if you get the standard or the optional, uh, the plumbing pieces in the back are going to be pretty similar. And at the lower uh, inlet side on the cold water, you're going to have a bypass valve. 
Uh, now the bypass valve is going to be push, uh, turned towards the side of the camper when it's in normal use mode to bypass for winterization purposes. You would reach in and turn that valve to the rear. Uh, that's going to bypass and push everything down the white hose. So that way you can run antifreeze down your hot water line system. Uh, or if decalcifying the plumbing lines, you can also do that and run it down the hot water lines. Now, let's take a look at the drain for the uh, fresh tank in this unit. We're going to take a look at the valves in here. Now, you have four valves to the water pumps, uh, this system. You'll notice one here that is used for testing only um, and should be left in the own position afterwards. Now, your drain valve in this model is a little more difficult to get to because everything is so tight. Uh, but it is located on the very bottom below your hot and cold water lines uh, down to the side of the gray tank. You will have to reach under there uh, and open it up to drain the freshwater tank. Now to the left of the hot water heater, you'll notice the jack for this side. Uh, and typically the only reason you'd need to be in here is to utilize the manual jack crank uh, if you were to lose power. Thank you for watching our 2023 Elite Walkthrough. Please be sure to check out our other videos online on our YouTube channel.